2019, of course, for McLaren was a fantastic season when McLaren were getting back more so to the team they should be. With Carlos Sainz having one of the best seasons out of any driver in 2019 and Lando Norris having a good debut season. But that step last season was one of many that McLaren are going to have to take if they're going to get back to the top. Which is of course what they want to do. But in 2020 and also beyond, how can McLaren continue to close the gap to the front runners? And will 2020 be even better of a season than 2019 was? Now again, as I've just said, 2019 was a brilliant season, but really the hard work begins now. Of course, McLaren put in a lot of hard work to get themselves from being at the back of the midfield to the front of the midfield in the space of a year, but we know where McLaren want to be in Formula 1. They want to be at the very front. And their aim has to be, slowly but surely, to close the gap in terms of lap time to Mercedes and Ferrari and Red Bull. And that is much, much, much harder than closing the gap to the front of the midfield if you're at the back of the midfield. Because as we know, the midfield pack is very, very tight and very close. Now, if we look at McLaren and the pace difference between their car in 2019 and, let's say, the Mercedes car, their car was about one and a half seconds off the pace. Maybe at best you could say 1.2 seconds, but I'll say one and a half. Now, obviously, in 2020 or even 2021 or 2022, they're not just going to massively close that gap. They already have, of course, for 2021, a helping hand in having a new power unit supply coming on board in Mercedes, and that will help the lap time if Mercedes still have the pace difference over Renault that they have currently. But I think McLaren definitely in this season have quite a good chance of closing the gap lap time-wise to the front runners. It will take a long time to close the entire gap, but in 2020, there is no doubt in my mind that they can take maybe a quarter of a second out of that. And there are two things that I really think help that, and the first thing has to be James Key, the technical director of McLaren, having now for 2020 his first proper McLaren car. He would have obviously had some influence when it came to upgrades for the 2019 car, which of course did, when they brought them, work well. But now he has the chance to design his first full McLaren car. We should see a slight step up from McLaren. Because James Key is one of the best designers in Formula 1. Ever since he became a technical director back when he was at Sauber and then when he went to Toro Rosso, he has always designed cars that were either very efficient in certain areas or all around, aerodynamically, very good. Especially when you consider the budgets of the teams he was working at. Again, teams like Sauber and Toro Rosso. He was, of course, a technical director for MF1, Spiker and Force India, but he didn't have a massive influence on things. Probably the most impressive part of that period was how he transformed Force India from being at the very back of the grid to being solidly in the midfield. By the time he left that team in 2010 to go to Sauber. And now he has the chance to design a McLaren with a lot more money and resources. We should see definitely an improvement. I don't know how big the improvement is going to be, of course, but I think it will be a step up. But the second big factor for why McLaren, I think, really can close the gap slightly in 2020 to the front runners is that they started working on this 2020 car quite early on. Possibly the earliest out of any team. And that has to give them some sort of head start going into this season that they've been able to look at what areas the 2019 car was not so efficient in and have more time to improve upon those areas than, say, other teams in the midfield. Of course, these two factors don't mean McLaren are absolutely guaranteed to be faster in 2020. They could be slower. We saw, for example, when Paddy Lowe had a full year to design the Williams of 2018, it was horrible. So it doesn't always work out when you get your first full chance at designing a car for a team. And again, we've seen this with teams before where they've given up on their car early on the previous year to focus on next year's car and it still really hasn't worked out. A very good example of that is BMW in 2009. They had a very good car in 2008, gave up development early on on the 2008 car to concentrate on 2009, and their car was much, much worse. So this doesn't mean McLaren are going to be absolutely guaranteed better in 2020, but it's looking promising. 
And going into the years beyond 2020, it is good to see that McLaren do have a good plan to close the gap. They're going to have a new wind tunnel in a couple years that is really going to help their development going forward. They have two exciting young drivers who I think will just get better and better. And they have Andreas Seidel now basically at the helm who is making a lot of important and key decisions. And his decision making so far has looked to be quite good. So it is good to see that McLaren do have a good and stable plan of how they're going to try and get back to the front by, say, 2024. Which is, I'm afraid, how long it's probably going to take realistically for them to get back there. But even though I've just listed many reasons why McLaren should be excited, and McLaren fans especially should be excited going into the future with developments coming for this team. This team, McLaren, has to be careful at managing their expectations. Because, let's be honest, they are still a midfield team. And they are still one big and bad step away from being what they were in 2018, which was a terrible team with a horribly slow car. So they've got to be very careful in, again, managing expectations because it could all fall away very quickly. And when I just talked about there how realistically long it's going to take for McLaren to get back into a race winning or podium position in Formula 1... Again, they've got to be very careful in setting their aims when it comes to getting back to that level. Because realistically, if McLaren, let's say in the next two or three years, develop really well and really start closing the gap, it's still going to take quite a long time. At the earliest, in my opinion, it will take until 2023 for McLaren, if they continue to improve year on year, to be possibly contending for victories. And that, again, is at the absolute earliest. And I really do hope, and I also do think, that Zach Brown, the head of McLaren, knows this. And I think he knows that the year-by-year -year progression of McLaren has to be took realistically. And they cannot afford to get back into a position like they were around 2015 or 2017, where they were setting very unrealistic expectations, thus why they were disappointing us so much. But one thing I am very interested in going into this season is the rivalry between the two drivers of Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris. Because these two at certain points of 2019 were very competitive, but if you look at the Drivers' World Championship, Carlos Sainz did dominate Norris. And I have no doubt whatsoever that Lando Norris is going to respond to Carlos Sainz and is going to be a lot better in 2020. So how will this rivalry take shape this season? Now in 2019, clearly Carlos Sainz was the better driver compared to Lando Norris. In what was for Lando Norris a mixed season, there were certain races where he was very quick and got a great result, but there were other races where things just didn't come together for him. And I think the most fascinating part of this rivalry going into 2020 is what can Lando Norris do compared to Carlos Sainz? Because I expect Carlos Sainz to maintain a similar level compared to 2019. But I think Lando has quite a lot to improve upon and I think he will actually make quite a sizable step up. I mean, let's remember last year was his debut season. You're not expected to be amazing in your first year. But I'm not sure if he does make that step up, it will be enough to beat Carlos Sainz. Because Carlos at the moment in Formula 1 is driving very well. And if you look at last season when comparing Norris versus Sainz and Norris's bad luck, at least in the battle between him and Carlos Sainz, he wasn't actually that unlucky. The only races in 2019 where Lando was definitely going to beat Carlos Sainz or outscore him in a Grand Prix, but bad luck stopped him doing that, was Baku because McLaren pitted him under the virtual safety car, but it didn't quite work out. In Canada, he had quite a weird reliability failure where his rear brakes caught on fire. At Silverstone, he got unlucky with the timing of the safety car and McLaren kind of messed up his strategy. And the only other race is Spa where, of course, he was running in fifth place and his car died right before the final lap. So again, compared to Carlos Sainz, he wasn't actually that unlucky. Yes, it would have been closer if Lando did not have, for example, the 10 points he was going to get at Spa took away. But it wasn't as dramatic as some people would have you think. But I think the only area I can think of that Lando can do better against Carlos Sainz in 2020 is performing at critical moments in the race. If we look at qualifying, Lando Norris is absolutely fine compared to Carlos Sainz. In fact, he's very, very good. 
and Norris and Sainz are about equal when it comes to speed over a single lap. But the reason Sainz was able to beat Norris so often in 2019 in the races was because when there were critical moments, Carlos Sainz produced. Whether it was at the start of the race, gaining an important position to go and get an important result, Lando just wasn't quite there when it came to those types of moments. But I think, to be honest, a big factor of that is experience. Experienced drivers, or more so experienced drivers, are able to do that better than younger drivers because they've been in those situations before and they know exactly what to do and how to handle them. So with experience, I think Lando should improve in this area, but it is the area he has to improve on probably the most. If he's going to have any chance of beating Carlos Sainz in 2020, and in 2020, I do expect Lando to improve quite a lot. I think he'll be quicker in qualifying. I think his race performances will be even better. And I think now he has that debut season out of the way, he'll want to prove in 2020 that he can mix it with the best drivers in the midfield, you know, your Carlos Sainz's, Daniel Ricciardo's or Kimi Raikkonen's. And he'll want to prove that he can, on a regular basis, beat them. Now, I still don't think in 2020 Norris will beat Sainz. I still think Sainz will have enough to beat Lando Norris. But definitely, it's going to be a much closer fight. And I think he'll be separated by maybe 10 or even 15 points at the end of the 2020 season. And if we forget all the banter they have off track, if we actually look at what they do on the track and what they're going to do, in my opinion, on the track in 2020, I think this will be one of the best performing partnerships in 2020. But hopefully in 2020, McLaren continue to make progress and get closer to their end goal of getting back to winning races or possibly winning championships. But guys, let me know in the comments section down below, for McLaren and their two drivers, what do you see for them in 2020? And how do you think McLaren in the future can slowly but surely, realistically, close the gap to the front runners? Let me know in the comments section down below. And also, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button as well for more content like this. But guys, until next time, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.